All right. So what are we going to talk about today? Goal setting. Good. Goal setting. What is a goal? Just the general definition of goal. So you mean, when I say set a goal, what does that mean to you? Omar, what does that mean? Um, making you know, a final destination for like, something that you want. Okay, so making you kind of have that, that, that big picture of what you want to accomplish. And so trying to write that down. And, okay, good. What else? Okay, so then you're working towards or working for. Good. Anybody else? Yes. Maybe like an outline. Good. Okay. So it kind of outlines a, a, and it kind of builds that um, picture of what you want to accomplish. Good. Excellent. Good. So kind of what all of y'all said, a goal is a target. I really like this. Um, I really like this quote right here at the top. If you aim at nothing, you will hit at it every time. Okay. So if you aim at nothing, you're going to be successful 100% of the time because you're never going to hit anything. But is that a good goal to have? No, probably not. Okay, so we're going to take about a quick little break right now. I'm going to uh, introduce Desiree from the University of Houston. We'll have her come up and talk to you a little bit about the University of Houston program. So basically what you all said before in our opening conversation the goal is like the reward. That's the end, the end of the line that Omar was talking about. What's something that you're working towards? Um, it provides that focus. Remind me your name. Um, no, don't tell me. Andrea, right? Yeah. Okay. Like Andrea said, it provides that outline. It provides that focus of what you need to be working on to get to that end goal. Okay. Um, and so hopefully setting, um, setting goals is going to help you be better in your personal life in your careers, in your professional life. Um, you can set goals in both sides. You don't have to just focus um, for this particular class on your professional side. You can focus on your personal as well as professional goals, okay? So again, our goals provide a clearer path. Sometimes we have to decide whether we're gonna go one way or the other. What our end result, what our goal is, is gonna help us um, decide which direction we need to take. Okay. Now, sometimes, do we have control over the, over the directions we get to take or we have to take? No. no sometimes life gets in the way, and that happens. Um, but then having that goal in the back of our mind helps us figure out how to get back to that correct path to get to where we can achieve that goal. How many of you have ever, um, how many of you all like to procrastinate? Nice. I'm right there with you. Okay, um, time, like I said in the last class, time management is not one of my best skills. Um, but how many of you like, okay, I have this big long list of things I need to be getting, I need to get done. How many of you have a big long list of to-do things you've got to get done? And it always keeps growing, right? <laughs> never never gets shorter. It always gets, it always gets bigger. Um, setting goals kind of helps you with build your self-confidence in your abilities. Um, how many of you, sometimes you look at your big to-do list and you're, you're just thinking, well, there's no way I can get this done. There's no way I can get this done. And then what do you do? What's that? You don't do it. You don't do it. I either take a nap or I go eat. Those are my two things that I do. If, I, my, if my to-do list is overwhelming, I'm going to go eat a Whataburger or I'm going to take a nap or probably in that order, I will do that. Okay? Because it'll, okay, it, it, it'll be there when I wake up. Okay? But what's the, what's the problem with that? You never get it done. And so with that, it constantly builds and builds, and then I just eat more Whataburger, and I take more naps, and it just things just never get done. Um, but if you, can like cre if you can complete one small thing, if you can complete one small thing, what does that do to your mindset? It boosts it a little bit. And so sometimes you look at your overall to-do list and you pick out that one thing that you can actually get accomplished. And I get that one thing accomplished. I'm like, yes, I did that. Okay, what's next? And it kind of built that self-confidence of being able to achieve those goals. So as you're setting your goals, you might have some pretty lofty, some pretty big goals, but you don't want all of them to be big. You want them to be manageable. 
um, so that you can feel successful and then encourage you to keep going. And you want to have a variety of goals. You don't want them to all be focused professionally. You want to have some about your you know, personal life, some of your hobbies, um, your family maybe, just different variety of goals so it keeps things interesting and it keeps you active in all different areas. So think about it this way. Our long-term goal is at the top of the ladder. That's our destination. That's our final destination, okay? And our short-term goals are all the little rungs on the ladder that are going to help us get to that long-term goal. So oftentimes, it's easiest to think that big picture and then work backwards. What do I need to do to get to that big picture, okay? Long-term goals, about five to ten years. Um, you want to think about what do you want to accomplish. So on your piece of paper, I want you to write two to three things um, that you want to accomplish. Either or long term. Long term. Yep, yeah, long term. Two to three things that you want to accomplish long term. Thinking five to ten years out. That could be have a family. That could be save $10,000. That could be whatever whatever you want it to be. It doesn't necessarily have to be career minded. You can see you can say you want to be the executive chef of a restaurant. That could be career minded, but it can be personal too. It doesn't have to be only career. So think about what did I say? Three to five. Think about three to five things that you want to accomplish. And then take a look at those and then kind of put a number one, two, three. It doesn't have to be like in the order that you wrote them, but maybe it's a, you know, prioritize which one you think is the most important to you and then one that was the least important to you. One, two, three, four, five. So you should be writing right now. If you don't have paper, ask for paper from your neighbor, ask for a pen. You should not be sitting there doing nothing. All right, so think about those, and now let's take that one that's most important, that one that you have number one next to. Write it right below that list. So write it, write it again underneath your list, or off to the side or wherever. But I want you to write that one again, and I want you to write, so this is your goals, long term, and I want you to write three little lines like this off of it. And at the end of each line, I want you to write a short-term goal. Okay? So that's number one, number two, and number three. What are three things that you need to do to accomplish this long-term goal? So what are three things that you need to do to accomplish that long-term goal? Short-term goals are anywhere between one to two years. So you don't necessarily have to work on all the short-term goals at the same time. You can work on this one for a year, then you can work on this one for a year, and you can work on this, this one for a year, and that's going to get you towards that long-term goal of five to ten years. Any questions so far? Anybody want to volunteer what their long-term goal is? Samantha. Um, open a restaurant. Okay, so our long-term goal is to open a restaurant. And what is, or what are your three short, one to three short-term goals? Um, first one is start thinking. Okay. And I want to say that at least a thousand 
um, start working in the industry working for us exactly. Okay. Begin working in industry. Okay, working towards that executive chef position. So these are some ideas that you can start building off those blocks that are going to give us that direction of how we get to, right? If I just say I want to open a restaurant someday, when is someday? It could be tomorrow. It could be 30 years from now, okay? And so we want to write this stuff down. I don't know if you're like me, but if I don't write it down, then it's just a hope. I hope the one day I'm going to go and see the Grand Canyon. But if I want to write it down as a goal, then I need to figure out what I need to do to get to that goal of going to see the Grand Canyon, okay? Which leads us into our next topic. Our goals need to be smart, okay? Not that there's anything such thing as a dumb goal, okay? But our goals need to be smart um, in that they need to be specific. Measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. So let's talk about that, okay? Um, in your what does success look like to me assignment um, that I graded, one, one person, I'm not going to name names, but you'll know when I put it up here. One person said they want to develop their palate, okay? So let's take that as a long-term goal. Okay, I'm going to develop my palate, meaning I want to explore, I want to taste different things. What is something that you absolutely hate to eat right now? Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Seafood. Why seafood? It's nasty. Okay. Why tomatoes? You know, I'm not really sure. I just don't like the texture or the taste of it. Okay, like any tomato or just like your traditional red garden tomato? Any tomato. Any really? Any tomato. Mm. Those heirloom tomatoes, like they're little green and yellow and orange and red, little cherry ones, they're so good. And I like them in like sauces. Yeah, yeah. But by themselves or on a sandwich. Do you like ketchup? I do like ketchup, okay. I know that it's basically all of tomatoes. Yeah, it's but it's got the vinegar in it. And Tomatoes by themselves yeah. are gross. Okay, and that's I'm fine. I'm to like them more, but <laughs> it just... Okay, anybody else? I don't like bitter things. You don't like bitter things, okay. Like what, what is, like an example, like arugula? I, now, Chef Chris, uh, last year, like I don't like arugula by itself, uh -huh. but she had us add like... Um, or something okay. to make it come out and I can do it that way. Right. So I feel like that helps but like really bitter stuff. Um, yeah. One thing that I, I typically was not really kind of a big fan of um, was IPAs, um, Indian Indian Pale Ales. Um, and those are really bitter because they're really super hoppy um, beers. Bless you. Um, but the more you kind of try things and my rule of thumb is if I'll try it twice. If I don't like it the second time, then I'm probably not going to like it. But that being said, when I was a student here at St. Phillips, we did shucking oysters in the basic skills class. And I, I would tell my classmates, like, they'd come over and, like, slurp their oyster, like, right in front of me. And I'm like, if you want to see me vomit, like, do that one more time. <laughs> do that one more time. I dare you. Um, now I can't eat enough oysters. Like I will go and I will kill two dozen oysters, no problem by myself. And I don't even use the crackers anymore. And so as you are developing your palate, okay, it's not saying that everyone's going to love oysters, but as a chef, as an executive chef, you can cook what you love, but it may not be what everybody else loves. The what other people love, maybe something that you, maybe you don't like, but you can still cook those things because guess what? You have a business and people need like it and they're going they're going to order it. Okay? I think that's one of the one of the things that I see on all those restaurant impossible shows. 
the chef is like, I loved eating this food. Well, obviously nobody else does because your business is in the toilet, okay? Um, and so let's go back because I got off topic. Okay, um, develop my palate. Is this a smart goal? Okay. Is it specific? Yeah. Is it measurable? How do I know when I've developed my palate? How can I measure that? It's taught when you taught when you can tolerate something. Okay. Um, but just right here, develop my palate is not very smart. So let's see if we can work it to where it can become smart. Okay. So I want to develop my palate by trying two new ingredients per month. Okay? Is that measurable? The end of the month, that has a time. I know if I tried two new things or not. If I didn't, guess what? I didn't achieve my goal. Okay? It's measurable. Is it achievable? Yeah. yeah. Two, two things in one month? Absolutely. Okay? Is it relevant? If my goal is to develop my palate and I am a chef or a chef in training, that is absolutely relevant. But it also has to be relevant to you. Okay? So what's relevant to you may not be relevant to somebody else. Because if it's not relevant to you, you're not going to work towards it. Okay? And then that time-based per month. So you see, just by adding this little bit, it now makes this goal a SMART goal. Okay. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. Okay? Um, if I had said, by trying two new things per day, is that achievable? Mm -hmm. Is that realistic? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Okay? So that's when we want to think about the, real, the, the reality of when we're writing this goal. Um, is it going to be realistic? Is it something that we can achieve? Because if, if I say two new things per day, how many of y'all have this goal? Go to the gym more often. Be honest. But, right? I'm going to go work out 30 minutes every single – I'm going to work out an hour every single day. Well, yesterday passed. I didn't go to the gym, so – now I'm going to feel bad about myself and go eat a Whataburger, which is a whole vicious cycle because I need to work out some more. And then tomorrow, I was like, well, I didn't go yesterday, so maybe I don't really need to go today. So, you know, go to the gym 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes three times a week. That gives you four days off and three days to meet your goal. So make it achievable. Otherwise, if you're not successful, you do want it to make, make it challenging you don't want all your goals to be a piece of cake. You want to make it challenging, but also make it realistic. Questions about SMART goals? Because this is going to be your assignment um, for that's going to be due next week. You're going to write five short-term and five long-term goals. Okay? Um, and they all have to be SMART. So now we're going to go into a little bit of a life plan, which kind of was the is where goals kind of fit in. So we have five different areas of our life plan. Education and career, that's where you guys are at right now. Um, then we have career broken down, our social and spiritual, our financial, and our activities. Okay, so these are all different aspects of our overall big picture life plan. So y'all are here right now getting a degree. How many of you know about our certificates that we offer? How many of you do not know about our certificates? Okay, cool. So a certificate, if you went to alamo.edu and typed in your degree, culinary arts, hotel, restaurant, whatever the degree is, it's going to go to that home page, and it'll show you the Associate of Applied Science, AAS, but there's also certificates that go along with that. And those are kind of like building blocks, okay? So the certificates are just smaller portions of this associate's degree. So think about this as a long-term and our certificates as a short-term goal. So as you work on those certificates, you actually achieve a certificate. You can apply for it. You can walk the stage. You can get a cap and gown and walk the stage with your certificate. And then at the end, you put all those certificates together and you'll get the associate degree. So each time you get a little bit more 
um, and it builds towards that associate's degree. Okay, so I encourage you to look at those certificates. There may be a certificate that's in another degree. So let's say you're culinary arts, but you don't want to do the whole baking and pastry arts program, but there's a certificate on just chocolates. Then, hey, you know what? I want to go do those chocolate classes and I'll get that certificate, but I don't have to go get the whole degree in baking and pastry arts. Or if you're culinary arts and you want to look at the hotel management side, and we have a um, hotel food and beverage operations, um, then you can get that so that you can have that hotel food and beverage operations certificate. So that if you're a culinary student and you wanna to go to a restaurant, do you always have to go to a, a standalone restaurant? No. no, there's restaurants and hotels. We have amazing restaurants and hotels. And so having that certificate, it shows that person that's hiring you that you have a little bit of an insight of what that food and beverage operations are inside a hotel. Um, it might give you a little bit of a, um, a leg up on the other competition. So think about that. Financial resources that are available. Um, you all are here at St. Phillips College. I commend you for that because we are one of the most affordable programs. Other programs for a two year, the same two year associate's degree are anywhere from 60 to $80,000. I don't know why. Um, well, the name, it's the brand, it's the name, that's one reason why. Um, but you're learning the exact same things here as if you were at the other, other institutions. Um, so that financial resource is great. Also your support network. How many of you have people outside of school supporting you? How do they support you? My husband stays home with the baby so I can go to school. Husband stays home with the baby so you can go to school. Anybody else? Good. People give you different people give you rides to school. Absolutely. So we all have support in the different different ways. Um, we want to make sure we can build that support. And St. Phillips College has resources for you to build that support if you don't have that as well. Um, so if you need if you need resources, please come talk to me. I can see if I can point you in the right direction. Your career can be part of your life plan. So I know a lot of you wrote your, about your career goals in your what does success look like? So you can take that information and help you with this next assignment of breaking that down into the goals, the long-term and short-term goals, okay? Um, people start their careers, they wanna go for power. Some people wanna be that GM of a hotel, the general manager of a restaurant, the executive chef. Some people do it just for that status level and some people just do it because that self-satisfaction. When somebody enjoys your food, when somebody gives a positive review online because your hotel staff was amazing, that self-satisfaction, I think is something that is, it, that is not unique, but is important in our industry because our industry is very challenging. Um, I don't think there's any other group of people in a hotel that, have, that demonstrate self-satisfaction better than our housekeepers, okay? Not a lot of people go into a hotel saying, I want to be a housekeeper. I want to clean rooms. But the individuals that do that take, take such pride in their work and they have such strong self-satisfaction of doing a great job um, is what keeps our hotels running. Um, okay, so social and spiritual. So these can be different goals that you can look at. Your family, your friends, any kind of religious values that can kind of shape your goals. Um, financial. Finances is a huge part of our goals, especially if you want to travel. It takes money to travel. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do everything in the traditional way. I have friends who are bloggers, travel bloggers, and they have so much advertisement on their travel blog that their advertisement pays. That's basically their job. They run this blog, they go visit places, they write about it, people read their blog, and the more hits they get, the more advertisers will pay them to pay to advertise on their blog because it has so much traffic. So you don't necessarily have to have this nine to five work job that you go get paid hourly, you get paid salary. You can get money from a lot of 
hopefully reputable places, okay? Don't do anything illegal. Um, <laughs> but uh, you want to be legal about it. Um, but there's other ways in the traditional just get a, a paycheck from a, from a job, okay? So think about that. And then your activities can also shape your goals, okay? I know a lot of y'all wrote that you want to travel more. That can be a way to develop your palate. That can be a way to, you know, visit one new destination every year. That can be a short-term goal toward developing your palate. So there's different things that you can do uh, with that. So we put value on our goals, okay? Intrinsic and extrinsic. What does extrinsic mean? Based on what you see up here, what does extrinsic mean? Materialistic, right? It gives you get money from it. You get some kind of um, recognition from somebody else. So it comes from outside. Okay, it's not something that you give yourself. It's recognition. It's awards that you receive. Um, it's money in the form of a paycheck, in the form of your profit of if your business is profitable. Okay, so those are extrin extrinsic values. On the flip side, we have intrinsic things that come from inside. That's where we get that self-satisfaction. How many of y'all like to cook for other people? Okay. How many of you like watch them as they eat your food? Not like creepily, like don't stare at them, but like, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Take a bite, wait for it. No, and then what do they do? They close their eyes. They kind of like do that little half smile thing and they kind of nod their head. Or if you're my friend, like you do a little happy dance when you eat, right? If food makes me do a happy dance, that makes that person who cooked and prepared that food feel so amazing, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes our goals don't all have to be all about money. It can be about that self-satisfaction. It can be about building that self-esteem, about seeing somebody else enjoy what we have created. And so think about that because you are going to um, identify whether your goals that you've written have extrinsic nature or intrinsic nature. Okay. Um, with our goals, we have to prioritize them. Like I said, when we had those three little draw, the th three little arrows off of your your long term goal, you can't always work on all of them at the exact same time. So we identify the uh, the order that we need to actually do them. And then, like I said before, life gets in the way sometimes. And so we might have to reevaluate what is the priority. I've had students that come to me and say, Mr. Uminski, I have all this stuff going on in my personal life. You know, as much as I don't want to see you leave school, I want you to be successful. Sometimes you need to stop, focus on life, get life together, and then come back and finish school when you can have the focus that you need. Okay, and so it's not something that I like to recommend to do, but sometimes it's necessary. And so you have to kind of think about reevaluating what your priorities are. Uh, your goal might be to finish school in two years, but if you have a health issue or if you have a health issue in the family or if you've got some other things going on, you might have to stop that for a moment, focus on that, and then come back when you can give the full attention, okay? And that's what we talk about when we talk about trade-offs. Trade-offs, so sometimes life happens and we've got, we've got to trade off some things. You all are trading off the opportunity to work full time so that you can be here at St. Philip's College taking this class. What are the things are you trading off in whether it's personal or work related to be here at school? Sleep, yes. I amen to that. <laughs> I'm in my last semester, my master's program. I cannot wait to be able to go to sleep at a decent hour once I finish my master's program. Okay? How many of you have had this thought? And I had it many times. Man, when I finish school, I'm gonna have so much extra free time. <laughs> You've had that thought before? Um, mm -hmm. Like all this time I've spent at school, I don't have all this amazing free time. Spoiler alert, probably not, okay? You're gonna find something to fill it with. It will fill, those things that you've been trading off will now be able to trickle in and you can do those things again. Whether it's things that you enjoy, maybe you can work more, you can work overtime or whatever, make more money. Um, and so you're, this flexibility, when you think about your life plan, flexibility is required. 
And I'm not talking like actual flexibility because I would not be successful. I have zero flexibility. <laughs> um, but when it comes to all of a sudden something comes up, you've got to be able to kind of, you know, my one of my old bosses, she used to say rigid flexibility, which those two words really don't go well together. Rigid and flexibility. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, I want to be disciplined, but at the same time, if something comes up, I need to be able to have that flexibility to change my mindset for a moment. Let me focus on this, let me reevaluate, and then I'll jump back over here. Does that make sense? You gotta have a little bit of flexibility. Plan A, plan B, now we're on plan C. If that didn't work, let's move on to the next one. Let's reevaluate and think of something else. Negative baggage. I'm not going to ask for hands on this one, okay, just think about it for yourself. Has there ever something happened in your life, whether it's personal or business or whatever, that has kind of left this negative baggage, okay? And think about this, and you can answer internally, how has that affected your ability to work? How has that affected your ability to achieve and go after your goals that you're trying to work on? One of the most challenging things, one of the most challenging lessons that I've learned um, personally is that um, every decision we have has consequences. Every decision we make has consequences. Consequences typically has a negative connotation, like a negative meaning behind it, but consequences are essentially the results of our decisions, the results of our actions. So our consequences can be positive. If I decide to get off Facebook for two hours and actually focus on studying for my test, what would the consequence of that hopefully be? A better grade on your test. Okay. And so consequences can be positive. I had an instance once I was teaching fifth grade outdoor education. I will never forget this student. Um, and he came up to me. If he had a thought, it was going to come out of his mouth like a half a second later. There was zero filter. I mean, he was so excited. He lived in Houston in the middle of a concrete jungle. And now he's two hours north. He's in the piney woods of East Texas and he is on sensory overload. He has never been outside his neighborhood, and now he's two hours outside a home in a forest with all of his stuff in a bag. He were going to a cabin, and he has all these questions. And so I knew if he had a thought, it's gonna come right out. To the point where we're sitting down eating lunch, and he's just talking, mouth full of food. I said, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. And so he asked me his question again. I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. And so he asked me his question again. And I said, no, please swallow your food. And now ask me your question. It took me one meal period. So by dinner that night, he starts talking to me. I'm talking to somebody else. I hear his voice. I just point at him. He stops talking, swallows his food, and then asks his question again. <laughs> so, you know, just kind of that, that slow patience, whatever, right? So that's the first day. Second day, he goes to class with a different teacher. He comes back from class and he's crying because he didn't get to go canoeing because he was talking too much. Now I knew that that was just his personality. This is a different teacher. They don't know him that well yet. And so uh, I said, you know, there's no negativity at my table. If you, you can sit over here, eat your lunch. When you're in a better mood, you can come back and join the table and eat lunch with us. So by dessert, he came back over. Um, and ate, ate dessert with us. And I told him, I said, you know, our, our actions have consequences. Your consequence for talking too much was that you didn't get to go canoeing. Well, looking forward, we can't change what happened this morning. We just got to move forward. And so moving forward today, you're going to pioneer class and you have the opportunity to go horseback riding. And you don't want to miss that. So what are we going to do so that you don't miss that opportunity? And that's kind of what that negative, sec this, this middle section right here is talking about how it affects your performance. Um, if you hold on to that negative baggage, it's going to affect your performance. But if you learn from it and you move forward, don't focus on the past. I can't change it. So if I dwell on that, 
then it's going to constantly bring my attitude and my personality down. But if I look at that and I figure out, okay, what did I do? Let me move forward. What do I need to do to get better at what I need to fix that? Then we can lead towards having more positive consequences than negative consequences. And it's not always a short turnaround. Sometimes it takes a long time to do that. Okay? Any questions, comments, concerns about that? I will share an example in just a moment. But uh, before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about our goal setting homework. So you're going to access the assignment in Canvas, um, and then you're going to complete the table. You'll download the, the document, you'll complete the table, and then you can upload it back to Canvas, okay, um, in the assignment.